Welcome back to another edition of 15 Minutes With. I'm your host, Sam Dostler, and today we are joined by 2012 Connecticut Golf Hall of Famer, 11-time CSGA individual champion, the 1991 Dick Tittleback Player of the Year winner, 2015 Dick Sitteroff Senior Player of the Year winner, and a whole host of other awards that would uh, and honors that would take 15 minutes to run through. We're joined by Bill Hermanson today. Hi, Sam. Hey, Bill. Thanks so much for uh, taking a few minutes to uh, to join us and talk a little bit about your, I guess, your life in golf. When did you start playing golf? Uh, well, my my first few rounds were as a as a young kid, probably uh, ten years old. Uh, very casual rounds up at Goodwin Park in Hartford. I grew up in Weathersfield. Um, I was always a baseball player, so I. A couple of uh, my buddies that uh, I played baseball with uh, started playing golf, and uh, I was sort of left on the outside looking in, and uh, I decided to join them for a few rounds. So I might have played a half a dozen times, nine holes with a just mixed bag of clubs, you know, just at Goodwin Park, but probably really started playing more uh, once uh, I had moved to Old Saybrook. Uh, so probably when I was a freshman in high school, uh, that's when I started playing real golf what what was the difference what made you sort of dive in head first well like i said i was a baseball player and uh that was my real love i played golf just because my some of my buddies were but uh so i was playing baseball for old saybrook high school and i you know kind of i'm not something i'm super proud of but i i i ended up quitting the baseball team because i wasn't getting the playing time I thought I, I should have gotten. But you know what? It's funny how things work out because that's probably the best decision I ever made because it got me down the path of, of getting involved in golf. So uh, I still love baseball, but uh, I'm, I'm glad I made that decision looking back. If, had I continued with baseball, yeah, I might have played college. That likely would have been it. You know, I certainly would have been, you know, uh, done with baseball by my mid twenties or late twenties at best, if I got involved in a beer league or something, but you know, here I am 64 years old and I'm still playing competitive golf. So there's no way that I could have done that had I stayed with baseball. So it turned out to be a great decision. Yeah, for sure. Uh, looking back at the, the beginning of, of your golf career, your life in golf, who had the biggest influence on, uh, on your game? Well, considering the way I sort of stumbled into the game, uh, I would say that my golf coach at Old Saybrook High School, Walt Dean, has to be right up there because he gave me, uh, along with three other freshmen at Old Saybrook High School, the, the chance to, to play and start as freshmen. Uh, the team wasn't very good when we came in. And Walt made the decision that uh, if he was going to have a bad team, he was going to have a bad team with four freshmen. And, uh, you know, that made some of the other parents maybe not so happy, you know. <laughs> but uh, he made that decision. And four years later, we had won four straight conference uh, championships, two straight state championships, and uh, two of us won individual uh, state individual titles. So. I think we went something like 77 and four was our four year record. Uh, so I think that decision he made was pretty good. And, and I'm certainly thankful that, that he gave me and us an opportunity to play as freshmen. Had he not done that, who knows? I, I might not even be playing now, you know, um, after I'd been playing a few years, uh, I could probably point to uh, Chuck Lasher who was the golf professional at uh, Clinton Country Club where I grew up. And, you know, I was, as a baseball player, I came to golf and I was never really a technically oriented guy. And I had a double overlap, Harley Davidson type grip, you know, super strong, way over to the right grip. And, uh, you know, all I could hit was one shot, which was a power cut. Not a bad way to play, really. You know, it's pretty consistent. I could hit it every time. Problem was I could never turn the ball right to left if my life depended on it. And uh, something Chuck said to me resonated 
at that time. I never really had a lot of lessons or really any lessons to speak of, but uh, Chuck did say, and I'll never forget this. He said, you know, you're, you're a pretty good player. He goes, but there's a limit to how good you're ever going to be if you don't change your grip. So I did. I, I changed right then and there on the spot to a more traditional grip. Uh, and to be honest, I shanked about every shot I hit for about six months after I changed that grip. And I was wondering what I was doing, but I stuck with it and stuck with it. I can remember circling greens. You know, I hit a drive down the middle and... <laughs> shanking my way around the green in a circle just every shot I hit was a dead shank so I was wondering what I was doing but anyway Chuck was right and uh, I, I stuck with it and, and it worked out for the best so uh, Chuck if you're listening thank you yeah it certainly has worked out uh, for the best uh, you know, we're talking with Bill Hermanson here on 15 minutes with along with with playing the game uh, you're really a student of the history of the game. What draws you to the his the historical side of, uh, side of golf? Well, as a history major in college, so that might have something to do with it. But yeah, I, I think beyond that, I, I just love reading about the game. You know, uh, living here in the Northeast, we couldn't play in the winter, or at least straight through the winter. And so I read a lot about it. And it's just something uh, that I've always enjoyed. You know, they say, they say the two sports that have the best writers and the best books are golf and baseball. Uh, and I agree. I think both sports lend themselves to good writing. And I, I would definitely agree with that. Yeah, for sure. I've, I've read my handful of both and you do find a lot of good uh, writers in, in both categories. Um, do you have a go, f a go to fact or tidbit about golf history? If you're sitting around with a bunch of buddies after a round that, that you might bring up. Um, I don't know. I, Jack, Jack's always been my idol, Jack Nicklaus. Um, and, you know, you can argue who's the greatest player of all time. It's, it's, I don't think there's any question. It's either Jack or Tiger. I'm always going to say Jack, but you know, there's, there's a lot of people who will say Tiger is the best, but here, here's something that I think might sway the argument in Jack's favor. Everybody knows Jack won 18 majors. What a lot of people don't know is that Jack was runner up 19 times in majors. On top of that, he was top five finisher in the majors 56 times. So think about that. Yeah, they're that's, phenomenal numbers. That's, that's mind numbing. I mean, uh, so pretty much for me anyway, for me personally, that, that tells you all you need to know about who the greatest player was. Uh, when did you start playing? You mentioned you played in high school. I know you played uh, briefly at Connecticut College, uh, but then focused on your academics for the rest of your uh, time in college. But when and how did you get into playing competitively post-college in, in the CSGA events? Um, I, I don't know. I just, I just started playing in some, and I probably would have been uh... 78, 79, you know, I graduated from college in 78. And um, I had played in the amateur a couple of times before then, but I, I would say that's when I started, started getting serious about it. Um, um, so I probably would have been 21, 22 ish, somewhere in that range. Uh, you said you first realized that you could play with the state's best players when you lost uh, Jerry Corville Jr. on the 36th hole. Uh, in the 1981 Connecticut Am, take me back to that to that day, that moment. Uh, what what made you realize you could could do it? Uh, and just take me through the day a little bit. Well, it was at Ridgewood Country Club up in Danbury, and uh, I was playing Jerry Corville in the final. But it really, for me, it was really more the whole week than that one day because. Uh, I, I beat some pretty good players on the way to the final. I, I beat I beat the pre-tournament favorite that year, who was Brian Clare, who had been runner-up to Freddie Cask the prior year. And so he came into the tournament. Everybody was talking about Brian Clare. He was a college player. I think he just graduated from college. And um, I ended up beating Brian. And then after I beat Brian, I beat two 
former amateur champions. I beat John Parsons and uh, Alan Breed. And so I was, you know, feeling pretty good about my game. And then I played Jerry in the finals. And at one point I was six down. So I was kind of getting hammered there, but I, I came back and I chipped away and chipped away and I hung in there and I ended up losing on the 36th hole. So it, it was a tough loss, but on the other hand, it, you know, it, it could have been a, it could have been a blowout and it wasn't. And, and although I lost, uh, you know, it proved to me that I could, I could hang with some of the best players, you know, in Connecticut. We're talking with Bill Hermanson, 2012 Connecticut golf hall of famer, uh, Dick Tuttleback player of the year, 91, 2015, uh, Dick Sitteroff, Senior Player of the Year, CSGA Team Captain in 0304, 30 times plus on both the CSGA Challenge Cup, CSGA Tri-State teams. Um, you've been having success now in CSGA events for a better part of five decades. What's allowed you to have that longevity? You know, I, I, I just love to play. I, I've never lost the passion for the game. Uh, you know, uh, we play winter golf here at Black Hall, even in crummy weather and in frozen greens and frozen bunkers and frozen ponds and uh, just just love to play. And the, and the guys I hang with love to play too. So it's just one of those things that's, that's, that's never left me. Uh, you started to really enter the winter circles beginning in the early 90s. Uh, you won the 91 Connecticut Amateur, and you also won four straight Connecticut Mid-Am titles from 1990 to 1993, all at your home course at Black Hall. What was the key for you to go from competing and, and playing really, really well high finishes to pushing yourself over the top and starting to find yourself in that winner circle on a, on a consistent basis? You know, I think... I think one of the things that's that's helped me is my is my ability to drive the golf ball well. Um, I may may not have ever been the longest guy playing, but I was plenty long enough. But I was able to hit it in the fairway, and I, I think playing at Black Hall, I always say that might have been the best thing I've ever done for my game is 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 becoming a member at Black Hall because it it forced me into becoming a better driver of the ball. You, you, you just can't fake it at Black Hall. You can't spray it all over the place and shoot a score. So it was kind of sink or swim. You either figure out a way to do it better or you're, you're going you're gonna to sink. And so I figured out a way to, to drive it, and I, and I think it's helped me uh, be competitive, especially at tougher golf courses. My, 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 my thing is I, I hope the course is playing as tough as possible because I feel like that's where I have my best chance. Uh, you also won the Mid-Am in, in 2001, hold the record for five Connecticut Mid-Am titles. The record still stands today. What is it about the Mid-Am that really allowed you to, to rise to the top? Do you, is, is there something about that tournament specifically? Yeah, I can answer that question in three words. No college kids. <laughs> uh, no, but I, I, seriously, I, 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 and it's certainly that's part of it, but uh, I think seriously, it, it's hard to play competitive golf. You know, once you start going through life's changes, you know, you, you, you know, you, you get married, you have a family, you have a house, your career, you know, all that stuff. It's pretty easy to be competitive when you're in college and you really have no other responsibilities and that's all you do every day it's a whole nother deal to maintain that competitiveness through throughout your life with all the other changes that are going on and all the other responsibilities that you have to, to deal with. So I don't know, maybe, maybe, maybe it's just the fact that there is no college kids play. <laughs> I think most mid ams will tell you the same thing. Yeah. It's interesting to just, uh, the different dynamics between those two tournaments because uh, it is it is or when I say two tournaments I mean something like the amateur and then the mid-am or the Palmer Cup and uh, the mid-am because uh, it is uh, people at different different points in their lives and it's 
it's it's interesting to to see how that breaks out. Yeah, it, it you know it's one thing when golf is your 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 entire focus. You know, um, we all go through that period in our lives. You know, when we're young, but things change. It, the priorities change. So um, it just becomes harder to uh, to stay competitive. But uh, fortunately, I've been able to 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 do it on occasion. Talking with Bill Hermanson in 1991, you won the the Connecticut Amateur. You overcame 11 birdies from Joe Dennis. You uh, you won that championship one up. What do you remember from that day? I mean, 11 birdies. That's quite the barrage to face. You must have rolled in a few on uh, on your own. Well, I mean, first of all, Joe Dennis was one of the finest players that Connecticut's ever seen. He was a he was a phenomenal player. Um, the other thing I remember about that day was the extreme heat. Again, similar to, to when I was in the finals up at Ridgewood, uh, it was also extreme heat at Patterson. But, um, you know, I remember I made a lot of three and four footers that day over 36 holes. And, you know, usually I'm good for a few misses along the way somewhere on those little shorties. But that day I didn't miss them. I made them. And I, was, I remember being three up on Joe after uh, the 11th hole of the second round. So I was three up with eight to go. And uh, Joe birdied uh, 11, 12, and 13 in a row on me to even the match. And it, it turned out we came down 18. We were all even. Uh, uh, and I, I rolled in an eight-footer uh, for birdie on the last hole or excuse me, eight footer for par uh, on the last hole to win one up. And I remember before I hit the putt, I, I said to my caddy, uh, Greg Kelly, who was a, another black hole guy, but I, I said to Greg, I said, you know, this is what all the practice has been for. And I, and I got up, I don't know what came over me, but I hit one of the purest putts I've ever hit in my life and it went in. And, you know, I just, it was very emotional at the time, but I also felt really bad for Joe because he played great. He re we were both under par. He made 11 birdies. Usually when you make 11 birdies, yeah. you're going to win the match. Um, and I didn't make near as many birdies, but I, I believe I only made one or two bogeys the whole day. So just just enough to, to edge him out uh, one up on the last green. Uh Besides playing golf, you, you also work in the golf industry. Uh, tell us a little bit about your work in the industry. Yeah, so about 30 years ago, I formed my own company. It's a uh, manufacturer's rep company uh, within the golf industry. And uh, I've been fortunate enough to represent some of the finest brands in the industry over that period of time. So um, it, it's been good. And sometimes that work, although it's in the golf industry, it did get in the way of playing, trying to qualify for USJ event, US uh, GA events. Um, but you still played in five. What, what's the experience like playing in those events on the national level? Well, I think anybody who's played in any of them will tell you that there's, there's nothing better. Uh, they're first class events played on the finest venues. Um, you know, and the ones that I think most of the ones that I've made, we've ended up, my wife and I have ended up making a trip out of it. So, yeah, I was there for the tournament, but we also did some sightseeing. You know, one year we went to the Grand Canyon, another year we were in San Francisco and, and Fisherman's Wharf and Alcatraz and the whole deal. So, uh, but, but they're just phenomenal events. I, I wish the one regret I have, you know, over my career is that Early on in my career, I, I, I really wasn't able to try to qualify for more of them, um, just just due to business commitments. And the, the, the problem I had back then and, and still have somewhat today is that those those were played in the fall, late summer or fall for the amateur and the mid amateur. Unfortunately, that coincides with my extreme busy season. So uh, as I've gotten further along in my career, I've been able to do it a few times, but it's been tough to justify taking a week off at that time of year uh stepping away from golf a little bit what are what are some of your hobbies that you, you like to do you, you read about golf you play golf you work in golf so at some point you must like to take a step away from the sport and, and uh, enjoy other things 
Well, yeah, you know, it, it's sometimes I have to do that because I'm around it a lot. You know, like you said, and, and, and you know, with, with work and playing, I, sometimes I do just need to take a mental break. So I used to do a lot of woodworking, but uh, I gave that up uh, a number of years ago. And, you know, my wife and I spend a lot of time together. We'll just go on these long, uh, she's a huge runner and she, fitness nut. And so she, she'll drag me out. We'll go on these long power walks and, you know, she, we, we, we love to go out to dinner and travel. So, you know, do stuff with her and, you know. Um, also continue to do a lot of reading, you know, a lot of, a lot of golf, uh, history books. Uh, I'm not a big instructional book fan. I, I have a couple maybe, but, um, I, I've just never been that mechanically oriented and I tend to be more the mental side of things and the history side of things. So that's, I've got probably, uh, 450 some odd books that I've, accumulated over the years and uh i'd say the vast majority, library should open a library yeah yeah i could well, I, i'd say the vast majority of them are are history or uh the mental side you know let's talk a little bit about team events you you've had a lot of success in team events you've won um better than 50 best ball championships many of them with your close friend dave Sheffsel, including the the 2020 senior four ball uh, this past uh, this past summer, what is it about team events that you enjoy so much? I, I think, and I, and again, I think I think most guys will tell you this too. Is it's that's it's the camaraderie. You know, um, not only have Dave and I formed a, a really great relationship over the past forty years, but we've both formed relationships with other players too, even though we may not play with them as partners on, on four ball events. But you get to know the guys and especially now that we're at the senior level, you know, you've been playing against these guys for, you know, thirty or forty years. So, you know, it's like it's like we're all best buddies. And it's basically it's just a really good group of guys. You know, so uh, if someone were to ask you to, to tell, if someone were to ask you to tell them one story about your golf career, I'm not sure if you can do it, but uh, what, what's one you would lead with? Well, I, that's, that's a tough one. I'm not, I don't even know if I can answer that one, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> Too many to tell. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I, I'll say one thing, you know, one thing that a lot of people don't know is that Dave and I have uh, this thing called the, uh, plaques and we award each other plaques for uh shall we say less than stellar shots on the golf course so you don't get a plaque for a great shot or a good shot you get a plaque for a really bad shot so we've both got a lot of them scattered around you know and uh but one in particular that stands out for me was this was when first, soft spikes first came out which i was never a huge fan of and we were playing at woodbridge country club one day and we're on the par five. I forget the hole. It might have been eight or something. It doesn't matter. But it was a par five, and I was hitting a three wood shot, uh, second shot. Uh, I was in the rough, uphill lie. It had been raining. The grass was wet. So I wound up, and I was going to pound this three wood on the green, you know. And I swung, and, and my feet, my foot slipped. Both my feet slipped on the wet grass, and I barely grazed the top of the ball barely grazed it, you know, like just barely touched the top of the ball. And the, I drove the ball straight into the ground and it came up vertically over my head and actually had so much spin on it. I drove it down into the turf and then it came up with so much spin on it that it actually went behind me. So my tee shot on that hole traveled the distance of about negative three feet and of course dave never lets me forget that shot but we've both got some uh, plenty of plaques out there but that one probably sticks out the most yeah for sure that's uh that's one that you're not gonna see too often we're talking with uh bill hermanson uh bill let's let's get you out on this one 2021 season uh despite the snow on the ground uh not too far around the corner do you do you have any goals for the season do you do you write out goals or think out goals ahead of a season what's your process as as you as we lead into the year uh, yeah 
just like everyone else, I just want to stay healthy enough through this pandemic to, to be able to have a competitive season this year. So I'm doing what I can, you know, with regard to that. Uh, but really more specifically, my goal is to uh, not have as many self-inflicted wounds as I had last season, you know, and, and by that, I mean, you know, mis silly mistakes on and around the greens, uh, you know, turning turning pars into bogeys with just you know three pots or whatever so that's that's my goal is to try to eliminate eliminate the uh self-inflicted uh wounds that that take you out of tournaments he has been bill hermanson winner of the 1991 dick tettleback player of the year award 2015 dick sitteroff senior player of the year award he also won the 2015 Senior Am, Senior Match Play, again, the Senior Am in 2019, among many, many other tournaments throughout his CSGA uh, playing career. Uh, Bill, thanks so much for taking a few minutes to chat with us here on 15 Minutes With. You bet, Sam. Glad to, glad to be with you. He has Thank been you. Bill Hermanson once again, and I've been your host, Sam Dostler. Thanks so much for taking a few minutes to listen.